Hi, I'm Daniel, a postdoc with the Seismology and Wave Physics Group at Eteha Zurich. We recently had a paper come out in GJI titled Connecting Beamforming and Kernel-Based Noise Source Inversion. It was with co-authors Corbinian Sagar, Andreas Fichtner, and Malor Sata Chimiev. The paper tries to make a link or compare two different classes of methods. So on the first, we have beamforming or back projection. The goal in this case is to determine where seismic signals originated. If we have observations at an array of seismometers, we can point back to where those signals might have come from based on the time shifts as those signals propagate across the array. Beamforming usually only solves for the direction and a propagation speed, but back projection or even more sophisticated match field processing actually maps that onto some spatial domain. So you're actually grid searching through locations on space. If you think that your noise sources originated at some place out in the ocean, or you think that your earthquake tremor signals originated on some fault plane, well, back projection and match field processing give you the tools to test that and image those signals. Let's take a look at how that works. So in this example, we have three stations, and we have a grid of spaces that we're going to test. The yellow star means there might be a seismic source there. We grid search through each of them, and at each location, we would work out what the time delays would be. How long does it take for the signal to propagate from our noise source to each station? Given our waveforms, we can apply time shifts to those waveforms to see how well they align. We would stack these signals or measure a correlation coefficient between them and ultimately map out where they align successfully. So in this case, we have a synthetic toy example. We put a synthetic noise source at the location of this red star in the northeast. We have three stations in the center, and we apply this match field processing method. Sure enough, uh, the, the method points back to the northeast. There's a blue swath, a blue region of higher correlation where the noise source must have originated. The second method we're interested in linking is a more formal noise source inversion. In this case, we actually compute synthetic noise correlations. We compare these synthetic noise correlations to our observed noise correlations and define a misfit that we want to minimize. So now we can actually grid search through our spatial domain, just as before, try perturbing our source model at each point, and measure whether the misfit increases or decreases. This tells us how we need to update our model, so we can apply that update, we can change it, and repeat this process as many times as necessary, iterating until our noise, our synthetic noise correlations match our observed noise correlations. We see that the results of these two things are very similar. So this figure on the left shows the match field processing result as before. The figure on the right shows the sensitivity kernels after having done one iteration of this noise source inversion. In both cases, they're pointing back towards the correct true noise source. Now, this method shows some very promising initial results in, pre in recent years, but it is a bit more computationally expensive and it's a bit more mathematically heavy in its derivation. These two classes of methods aren't actually that different from one another. Obviously, they're similar in their goal, but we hope to show in this paper that they're actually quite similar in their execution. Our hope is that if you as a researcher can understand one of the methods, that we can walk you through the steps necessary to understand the other. The paper isn't deriving anything new. For a full mathematical proof, um, I'd recommend works by Joran Tromp or my co-author Corbinian Sagar or many others that we mentioned in the paper. Our hope is that by proposing a link between these two communities, that both sides can benefit. There's so many sophisticated tools and flavors and image enhancement techniques in the beamforming literature that I'd love to see worked into noise source inversions. And there's advantages, vice versa. For more info, check out our paper in GJI. There's a link in the description below. We also have a little set of example codes, Python Jupyter Notebook uh, posted to our group's website. Again, that link is in the description below. Thanks.